الحمد لله وكفى وسلاما على عباده الذين استفى اما بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من شر حاسد اذا حسد سبحان ربك رب العزه اما يصفون وسلاما على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم Normally when we meet on Fridays we talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We talk about yakin, we talk about our iman, we talk about our zikr We talk about increasing and furthering our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala But the reality is that the deen of Islam is also mentioned in one very other important thing Which is hukuk al-ibad Which is the rights and responsibilities that we have over our fellow human beings And in fact, the deen of Islam, it's part of its beauty, part of its power, part of its encompassing totality. That not only has it been revealed to guide and instruct a person as to how they should behave towards their Lord, the adab that they should have towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it's also been revealed to teach us, educate us as to the adab, the akhlaq, the morals, manners, etiquettes that we are to behave with one another. The other that we're supposed to have to the fellow believers, mu'mineen and muslimin As well as the other we're supposed to have to all of nas or insan, to all of humanity And it's very important actually that alongside we're discussing our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala From time to time we reflect upon different character attributes, different uh, relationships that we might have with other people One of the major Uh, challenges actually that a human being has is precisely how to interrelate with other human beings And those of you who live in the dorms are facing this challenge right? When a person comes to university and you mingle with so many different students Or when you live in the dorm and you live with so many different students Well the more and more contact, the more and more interaction you have with other people Then the more and more flashpoints there are The more and more possibilities for conflict Controversy The more and more you're exposing yourself to being hurt And the more and more you're granting yourself the ability to hurt other people And therefore it's very important that if we are placed in such a setting In which we have extensive interactions with other people Some are friends, some are classmates, some are acquaintances, some are colleagues, some are instructors, some are students So in this realm of extensive interaction it's critical uh, that we actually try to It's more important for us perhaps than people who live relatively secluded or simple lives It's very important and critical for us to learn what the deen of Islam says about how we're supposed to interact with other people One of the major illnesses of the heart is to have what is called bughaz or what is called hasad Bughaz means to have spite, malice and hatred towards somebody else Or simply speaking to have ill will, to have negative feelings, to harbor negative feelings towards another human being in your heart And the second word is hasad which means envy or jealousy To be envious or jealous of another person in your heart And unfortunately you know we might think, we might like to think of ourselves as being free of these two attributes But the reality is that many of us, the majority of us actually are suffering And are failing at one or multiple levels And have fallen prey to these two sinful attributes And then so we need to discuss what these attributes are We need to discuss how the deen of Islam teaches us right, To cure these attributes inside us So the first thing is having anger towards someone To being upset with someone Right? Uh, and the sign of this really If a person wants to know if we have this is, is there anybody in our life Or anybody on this campus Or anybody in the dorms Who when we see them we get disturbed At the very minimum we feel disturbed We feel ill at ease We have a feeling of unease Perhaps a feeling of apprehension Perhaps a feeling of anger But there's some effect In other words our heart Is affected simply by seeing this person Or by engaging this person Or by being in the presence of this person That means some level of bughla Some level of ghil Some level of anger, hatred, rancor Has entered into our heart Now if you think about it that way Then probably for almost every one of us There's at least one if not several people like this In our lives Now 
if you look at this, what is it about this person that has made us angry with them? So normally the, re- the way we excuse this in ourselves is we say that no, this is justifiable anger. That this person really has wronged me. This person really has done something wrong. I'm justified in being upset. I'm justified in being disturbed or perturbed when I see them. In fact, I'm even justified in harboring those negative feelings or having that ill will. That is the major trap, right, that shaitan or our nafs, right, puts us in and keeps us on this path of anger. So let's just take this, let's take the case of justifiable anger, quote-unquote justifiable anger. If we can solve this, if we can make ourselves understand why this is not acceptable, then it will, it's unnecessary to establish that unjustifiable anger is also unacceptable in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And simply speaking, right, the way that we are going to get around this is as follows. That, okay, look, it's possible that X has done something. We will acknowledge and admit that X said something to hurt you. X said something that did hurt you. We'll go one step further and say X said it deliberately to hurt you. Right? And therefore you, your feelings are understandable. You, we can rationalize them. We can justify them. However, if we want to look at it this way, then the cure for this is as follows, is that we should look inside of ourselves. How many things have you and me done that justifiably should anger Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How many things have me and you done that in complete justification and all fairness and all justice, there should be actions or emotions or sayings due to which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be extremely angry with us, so if we wish that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should forgive, should forgo His justifiable anger with us, then it de- that demands and necessitates that we also be willing to forgo, to overlook our justifiable anger towards other people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this in the Qur'an al-Kareem, وَقَازَمِينَ الْغَيْزِ That there are people who literally swallow their anger. This is the meaning in Arabic. That they swallow their anger. It means they suppress their anger so they feel anger. The deen of Islam is not saying that you, you will become emotionally numb, that you will not be hurt, that you will not feel anger. You will feel that. You will feel that anger and resentment. But what does Allah SWT want us to do? He describes this as a praiseworthy attribute of the believers that they swallow their anger, they suppress their anger, they do not act upon it. That's really what it means by swallowing. And that is something that a lot of us have this problem is that we react. Muslims are not reactive people. We cannot be pro we cannot be provoked, we cannot be prodded into action that somebody writes something, we shoot back somebody says something, we shoot back somebody does something, we shoot back that is against the sha'an of a believer right? if we do something for some other reason, for an educated reason, that is different but purely reactive behavior is not there in the Muslims right? and this is what Allah SWT means, that the anger is there but the sign of a believer is that he swallows it, suppresses it it means that she doesn't let the water boil over she puts a lid on the pot no matter how much the water might be boiling she keeps that lid securely fastened and you know this really is for our own benefit because many times whenever we act in anger, we act in haste we make a decision that we will regret later on somebody will say something, if we allow ourselves to be provoked we will shoot back and say something that we will regret later. We will wish that we could take it back. So it's actually for our own benefit that Allah SWT has taught us that we should try to be people who swallow and suppress our anger. If anything, actually other than being reactive, Muslims are meant to be proactive. They're supposed to preemptively launch uh, a word or an action uh, or a dua against evil. Right? Uh, or against, uh, you know, injustice. So the first way then to control our anger is simply to think that, okay, if I'm angry with this person for X, Y, Z reason, just try to imagine how angry Allah SWT must be with me for X, Y, Z reason. And that has the benefit of us then, you know, in that sense, in a person will totally even forget about other people. That should be enough, this thought process, this mental exercise would be enough to make a person just become totally lost in their own relationship with Allah, they'll forget. That is one way that they can throw water on the fire of their anger towards somebody else is when they get focused on the anger that Allah might have for them then they get so preoccupied with that that they totally become oblivious to their feeling of anger towards that other person. And secondly, again, 
is to think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly you I am if that person is worthy and deserving of my anger then how infinitely more am I worthy and deserving of your anger Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you have not reacted you have not manifested your wrath you have not seized me in your wrath in your power in your kudrat in your might in your jalal in your azmat so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whatever little ikhtiyar you have given me whatever little power you have given me I will not seize this other person in whatever little power you have given me right? and it's very important that we sit down and reflect and think and try to identify who the people are that we might harbor negative feelings towards and sit down and make this mental exercise to remove that negative feeling